Hello there EDF friends, in this video I want to talk about mission 13 for DLC pack 1 called Engage Enemies 3. Um, this is probably one of the most difficult missions in the game um, because of just certain factors where you can't really regroup and, and um, heal up too much. It's, it's just constant enemy after wave after wave. Um, it's even actually comparable to one of the hardest missions on DLC Pack 2 as well, so I really think this is a tough mission. I want to talk about this. So, first of all, let's talk about the waves. Uh, right when you spawn in, you're going to see a bunch of NPCs in front of you, a couple of Nicks, and you're going to have three D-Roys. Uh, the medium sized ones and you're going to have um, on the left side you're going to have a cluster of colonists you're going to have uh, you're going to have three uh, armored machine gun colonists and five normal machine gun colonists and on the right side you're going to have five normal machine gun colonists and one armored machine gun colonist so to get to the to the next phase you're going to have to kill about six colonists and then once you kill those six then you're going to have a bunch of tadpoles coming from the sky now for this phase, um, I recommend leaving one colonist or one D-Roy with no legs and then just focus on killing everything else. Because if you leave with that one enemy, then the second wave of tadpoles will not come in until you kill that final colonist or D-Roy. So just a little tip there. So make sure to leave one colonist or one D-Roy. So you kill all the tadpoles of that first tadpole phase and then kill the last enemy and then the next wave of tadpoles will come in. This one is even even more difficult and they're gonna dive bomb on your on your NPCs and on you of course so the next wave happens once you kill about three-quarters of the second wave of tadpoles so once you do that that's what makes this mission difficult because you still have tadpoles to deal with while the, the last wave comes in which is pretty rough so you're gonna have two large D-Roys on the left side you're gonna have five medium D-Roys on the right side and on the right uh, and on the and on the middle and uh, so that's that's pretty rough and then you're gonna have colonists coming in from each side of the map coming down the road you're gonna have a mortar a mortar colonist a shotgun colonist and a machine gun colonist on the left side coming towards your spawn and then on the right side you're gonna have also a mortar colonist a shotgun colonist a machine gun colonist and they're all armored and then in the middle left side you're gonna have also one mortar mortar colonist machine gun colonists and shotgun colonists and on the middle right side you're gonna have two machine gun armored colonists and one shotgun armored colonist so pretty rough and then and that that is not the last phase believe it or not then once you kill one colonist doesn't matter which one you kill one colonist then they're gonna call in about six to eight blue tadpoles and that's what makes it really rough so so definitely important to not kill that colonist that first colonist until you're ready um, to deal with those those tadpoles. I think it's different number compared to if you're playing online or offline because when you play offline it seems like there's less, there's only six blue tadpoles, but when I was playing online I thought there was like eight or ten, so it just, it, it seems like it depends on, on if you're playing online how many people are in the room. So now let's talk about weapons as far as each class goes. Um, so Ranger of course is the most difficult because of just his, his mobility. Uh, but he does have some options. So I would recommend for Ranger, he's usually going to be the the uh, support role in his mission, unfortunately, because of just his lack of mobility. And you can run, you can take super sprint, but still, regardless, you're going to probably have issues with this mission. So for Ranger, I recommend taking... Uh, well, first of all, the main thing you want to focus on in this mission is missiles. Um, you mainly want to kill the tadpoles and the D-Roy legs. Sniping is secondary, honestly, in this mission. Um, you do need to kill the colonists at the beginning with relative speed, but other than that, you just want to make sure to take out the tadpoles and the D-Roy's legs. So, to be the most useful for Ranger, I would recommend taking the MEX Emerald, um, and also taking the uh, the DLC Dunkel Sniper, sniper Rifle, um, for just for killing the D-Roy's, killing the uh, colonists when you need to. Um, you could also swap out the Dunkel for a healing bomb if you need to, but I would recommend taking the MEX for sure to help out with all the uh, tadpoles. Um, and, and as far as once you kill the first phase of the uh, D-Roys and colonists and the tadpoles come in, um, then I would work on moving forward from spawn and moving at one of the edges of the map and just kind of missile from far away and try and um, help your team out that way. 
Uh, Wing Diver is pretty good here just because of her speed. Um, I recommend, it depends on the role. If you're going to be the kiting role, the, the one who, who dashes around and uh, fights at the very end, the last phase, then I would recommend taking uh, some kind of burst damage for the blue tadpoles because those are going to be the biggest threat, honestly, in this mission. So, you know, Rapier, Nova, the Phalanx, or the, the um, even the, I really like the uh, Dragoon Lance as well, level 92, because that's one big 40,000 damage burst if a blue tadpole lands on the ground. And then for your second weapon, um, you probably want something to knock down the blue tadpoles that are chasing you if you're having issues getting hit by them. Um, so, I would recommend taking a Ghost Chaser, 600 meter range, and it'll knock down anything it touches, and it's very accurate. Or you could take the uh, Mirage 5-Way S, level 56, which also does the same thing, which will knock tadpoles out of the air. But, um, I think the Ghost Chaser is a little bit better. You can also use this to knock down some of the tadpoles to the ground with it, as well. But, um, that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, it, like I said, if you're getting hit. If, you, if you're able to dodge them pretty well with the Jet Core, um, which isn't a bad idea on this mission, honestly, um, then you could probably get away with not taking the, the weapon to knock enemies down. But th those are the weapons I recommend. I mean, the Jet Core is good. It's fine. Um, I, don't, I don't dislike it on this mission. Um, you're not going to have too many energy issues. It's just nice having that super speed for the very end if you're the last one alive, which you probably will be if you're the kiting roll. Um, but you can also take, you know, the, the Rush Core or something that has a higher uh, energy recharge. Um, for air raid, oh yeah, sorry. For for her secondary role, she's not going to be the kiter. If you have you have you have like a fencer or another wing diver that's going to be running around, um, then you can be more of a support role, and you could take a, a Ryzen sniper rifle because that thing is very good to um, to kill the Deroys very quickly. Um, also kills tadpoles, of course, or the blue pet tadpoles, or you know the colonists. But it is pretty dangerous. Or you can also take a homing grenade as well to help out with the small tadpole phase because you need someone to take out those tadpoles at the very beginning as well. So you can also use Mirage as well to knock to uh, kill some of them. But uh, but that's what I'd recommend for Wing Diver. Um, now onto Air Raider. Air Raider is very good here, at least at the beginning phase. Um, I recommend taking something to kill the tadpoles. So I would recommend taking the level 86 Strafe Plan uh, for sure to kill them. And then also I recommend taking a Sprite Fall. Um, I like the Sprite Fall Maximum because it's a tighter a tighter uh, uh, spread and it comes in faster so you can kill D-Roys easier with it. It's also good on colonists. And then if you want to take a Barga, which isn't too bad of an idea, then I would recommend taking a Defense uh, Guard Post M3 and you can put it on his foot, on the Barga's foot, and then you'll have more health for your Barga because believe me, you'll need it on this mission. Um, if you don't want to take Barga, which I don't necessarily think you need to. I think actually it's not a bad idea to take a red guard. And if you take a red guard, then I would take um, the strafe plan still for the uh, for the tadpoles, and then I would take two sprite falls um, this time uh, because I think it's the sprite falls are very good here because it's it's really good easy call in damage and it's very strong and very useful. So I would take the sprite fall maximum and then the sprite fall destroy. And then that's also very good because if you take the red guard, you can jump around the map. Um, the fastest movement in a Nyx, if you don't know, is to jump. As soon as you hit the ground, just hit the jump again. Um, actually, you can hit it before you hit the ground. But keep hopping with the red guard, and you are very, very fast. And you can outrun the colonists and Deroys on this map. So you can just run around the outside of the map as they chase you. Um, but if you do take the Barga, um, something very important is you don't want to stay at spawn because all the colonists come to spawn. So you want to move to the to the if you're spawn when you come in spawn looking to the front um, you want to go to the uh, front right side if you're going to take the barga with the defense post and then last fall fencer is very very good here of course um, I recommend this is probably my the highest uh, the best setup I recommend for fencer and that would be finest hammer and the DLC shotgun um, the reason for the, the reason for the finest hammer is because it good it's good on killing tadpoles for the early phase and is good for damage reduction. If you're ever in trouble, even while you're even while you're in the air and you're not going to hit, you know, the ground with the hammer, if you're swinging that hammer, you have 90% damage reduction. So I recommend taking the finest hammer for whenever you're in trouble. You can just swing it while you're dash hopping around. Plus, you can kill, like I said, tadpoles with it. You can knock down blue tadpoles with it too. And then your main damage is going to be your Dexter shotgun, which you know is very strong. And then for your second setup, I recommend taking two sets of high altitude missiles for the colonists. 
or, or sorry, for everything actually, the tadpoles, for the, to knock down blue tadpoles out of the air, to kill the D-Roy's legs. Like I said, it's more important to kill the D-Roy's legs and the tadpoles than it is to snipe on this mission, honestly. So, I mean, you could take two 38mm rage cannons, but honestly, like I said, it's not important to kill the D-Roy's, it's more important to kill their legs. And you can leave the D-Roy's then, it's no big deal. So. Uh, you can take that, but I would recommend taking um, the two sets of missiles. And then, of course, um, your added booster and added dash cell. So now let's get into the actual mission and explain um, how to do this mission, at least the best that I know so far. Alright, let's get on to the mission here. I'm playing with Fencer, Online, Inferno by myself here. I have two sets of high-altitude missiles, Finest Hammer, DLC shotgun, and then of course the added boosts and dashes. So right to start here, there's going to be one wave. Uh, the first wave is going to be three D-Roys, and then two clusters of frogs on, on left and right side, and a bunch of NPCs in front of you. So no matter what class you are, the first thing you want to take, do right at the start is you want to focus on taking out the D-Roys legs, and focusing probably I'd recommend on the left side of the cluster of colonists, because there's a lot more armored colonists on the left side so the NPCs will struggle a lot more on the left side. Um, and you want to make sure to leave uh, one or two D-Roys without their legs, or you can leave one or two colonists on the right side as well. But you want to make sure to have one one of those enemies left over so that you can um, so you can pause and not allow the uh, second wave of tadpoles to come in until you're ready. So as you can see, I'm just missling, missling the legs with my um, high altitude taking all the legs out and hitting, trying to hit the frogs as well. And the benefit of the, of the uh, since they're in a valley, is the frogs are in the valley, so they have a tough time hitting the NPCs as much. So even when I'm playing by myself online here, the NPCs stayed alive relatively well, which was kind of surprising to me, but it, 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 was, it worked out pretty good. And of course, if you're Air Raider, um, doing a couple sprite falls on the left side of the colonists is very, very good, very, very strong works out for them as well and you want to make sure to call on your vehicles as soon as possible um, you will be able to get two bargas out or you'll be able to get quite a few nicks out in this mission so very important as well and another quick tip for the beginning part is if you're a air raider or a class like wing diver where you you need some some uh, just to be to be safe from from the enemies um, for the for the tadpole phase um, you can stand between the nicks legs um, there's a there's a Nyx on the left side. I usually stand in between his legs as an air raider, so I'll, I don't I don't I don't have to worry about getting hit as much, whether it be from D-Roy's legs or from tadpoles or whatever. Um, also, if you are a fencer, you can dash very very far back from spawn, and uh, and also with ranger and just stay far away from the tadpoles as well. So that's also a possibility. So now we're on phase two here, where there's a bunch of tadpoles. Um, these will come in after you kill about six uh, colonists. So, like I said, if you're air raider, you can stand between the legs of the Nyx and call in straight plans or get into your vehicle, of course. Um, you want to make sure to keep the NPCs spread out so that they'll live longer. If you take them all, you'll find out that they'll actually get hit a lot more and die a lot faster and easier because of the fact that they're so clustered up. So, very important, I'd say, leave them where they're at and don't take them. Also, if you're a wing diver with the ghost chaser, you can look up and you can shoot all the tadpoles and knock them to the ground once so that you don't have to worry about that big dive bomb because they when, when they dive bomb initially it's a very very high damage so you can eliminate that by knocking them out of the air with the ghost chaser of course missiles you know if you're a ranger or a fencer you'll also be knocking them out of air as well but uh, mainly also if you're an air raider and you have a straight plan or someone on your team has a straight plan I'd recommend maybe not knocking down the tadpoles out of the air to let them land and then call the straight plan in because if you knock them out of the air it might be harder to kill them with the strafe plan. So like I said, very important, leave one D-Roy or one colonist here so that you can um, heal up and uh, if you grab, happen to grab any NPCs like I did as you're fighting, you can always heal them up with some items. And then as long as you have one D-Roy or one colonist alive, the next phase of tadpoles will not come in until you kill that last D-Roy or colonist, so that way you can clean up all the tadpoles and then be ready for the next phase of tadpoles. Alright, so now I'm going to kill this last D-Roy here, and since it's the last large enemy on the map, it'll pull in the next set of, of tadpoles. And these, of course, come in from, or these come in from four different uh, sides, so, but, um, so it's quite a, quite a large, quite, quite a large amount of uh, tadpoles, so it is kind of rough, but if you still have your NPCs alive, 
um, you're going to be, you'll probably be doing okay um, with the missiles, with the uh, finest hammer for fencer is pretty good too to kill them. But uh, pretty much after this phase, you're going to expect your NPCs to die. They're not going to survive much longer um, on, on the last phase because it's just there's too many enemies, too many colonists that come to the middle. So now during this, this, the second tadpole phase, which is the last tadpole phase, you want to start heading to the uh, right side of the map. Like right as you spawn in, looking out towards the, the cliff, towards the colonists, you want to start heading to the right. Into the, You can follow this water, this waterway down to the right side. Um, and you, what you want to do is, you want to head to the right so that, because there's going to be groups of colonists coming from the, from the left side, and from the middle, from the two sets from the middle, and then one from the right side. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to just alert one set of colonists or no, no, or no colonists at all. Um, either way, but because those colonists are going to come to your spawn point where you started at, so it's very important to um, not be there because you know colonists are alerted by visual by visual sight. So if you're out of their sight and you're not attacking anything near them, they won't see you, and therefore you have a lot more time to deal with these deroys. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to not even engage the uh, tadpole, the three tadpoles that come down the street on the right side of the map. But if you're an air raider. Um, you probably have a barga up by then. You could probably attack those three colonists and then hopefully uh, kill some of the purple tadpoles that come in. Or if you know, your team is not ready or wanting to do that, you can always just head way out to the uh, far, to the far forward right and just camp up on that hill with your Nyx or your Varga and just try and stay out of the way, out of the way, and try and kill Deroys uh, when it's safe to, which I'll explain a little bit more here soon. But um, as you can see. Um, NPCs are all dead pretty much for me, but because I have the finest hammer, I'm able to use the finest hammer to have a lot of damage reduction to reduce the damage incoming from the tadpoles, and also it's very good at killing the tadpoles because, you know, it does, what, 2,500 damage or something around there, um, and it has a very long range, so it's very nice to stay alive if you are, you know, fencer. For sure, I would definitely recommend using this weapon. Alright, once you kill enough uh, tadpoles, as you can see, the last phase comes in, which is um, two large deroys and five medium ones, and uh, the two large are on the left side, or on the right side, technically. So, the way I'm going to talk about right and left is based on when you spawn in the way you're looking. So, from that position, I'm heading to the front right of the map when you spawn in. As you can see, there's colonists on the left side that are walking around over there. I don't want to alert them. I don't have to alert them. And, like I said, if you don't alert them, it's probably better because they're going to chase you across the whole map. So what I'm doing is I'm heading to the front right of the map and just killing the majority or the, the remaining of these tadpoles. And, uh, like I said, if you're a wing diver, you can fly over here, do the same thing, just finish off these few tadpoles. Um, if you're a ranger, you're in a lot of trouble because the ranger definitely going to struggle on his mission. But same idea, you can run over here and, and try and support a little bit. Um, but the next focus we're going to do is once once the colonists all convene at your spawn location where you first spawn in on the mission, um, they're going to stay there. And as long as you don't attack near them or they don't see you visually, then you'll be safe from them. They won't they won't come after you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head now to the back of the map and take out the legs of these deroys so that I can. Um, be you know be safe because the deroids are the biggest threat right now. So I don't want to attack any colonists if possible. And like I said, if you're air raider, you can jump back here with the Nyx and do that. Um, if you're uh, wing diver, of course, you can dash back here and do the same thing and try and take out the legs or you know or kill the deroids too. You don't have to you know if you have the ability to kill the deroids, yeah, go ahead and do that as well. Um, Ranger, like I said, is going to struggle quite a bit. Um, he could maybe stay. Um, at the front right of the map with like a brute helicopter or something or try and snipe the deroids but you want to be careful not to attack a deroid that's near the middle of the map because if you do then the colonists will be alerted to you and you know once they're alerted to you you can't undo that so I'm trying to attack any deroids that are you know away from the middle of the map and I'm trying to not um, go towards the middle of the map so they don't see me but uh, you know pretty much this phase is going to be primarily going to be used uh, useful for fence or wing diver who are fast so they can traverse these mountains and get away. Um, I would say fencer is probably the easiest because of the fact you can take a hammer and you can do damage reduction if you need it. But uh, like I said, the primary uh, focus is taking out the Deroy's legs and the remaining of these tadpoles. And if you're an air raider with the Nyx, you can also be jumping around these mountains around the outside of the map. And uh, pretty much you're, you're trying to do, you're trying to make a U shape. Um, because, like, when, right when you spawn in, 
that's where the colonists are at. And the only visible, the only way for the colonists to see you is if you're in the front of the map. So what I'm doing is I'm going behind spawn and making a big U-shape behind you all the way around, but not going towards the front of the map. Because if I go towards the front of the map, even on the edge of the map, the colonists will see me. So I'm just trying to keep out of view of them. And then, of course, you know, killing all the D-Roy's legs as I'm doing this. So um, it, it is a struggle for... Uh, for Air Raider, I guess to some extent, but you know he he can always take you know he can always call in sprite falls with you know on the uh, on the D-Roys. He can always use his Nyx to attack some of the D-Roys. Um, strafe plan to be careful with because you could attack the um, you could attack the colonists, which is which would alert them. It's very careful. You don't want to do that. But the reason I, I recommend strafe plan, by the way, is instead of Phobos, is because. For one, it, it works, it's safer on your NPCs. For the beginning part, you want to keep your NPCs alive, so you don't want to kill them with the Phobos. And on top of that, the Phobos isn't that great on this mission, honestly. The strafe plan can kill the tadpoles just as good, and it's safer for you and your friends. And also, the Phobos isn't that great on D-Roys or um, Colonists, so it doesn't really matter. That's where the Sprite Fall comes into play. So now I'm just going to finish off the D-Roy's legs. I'm not going to. I'm going to make sure not to go towards the front of the map, even if I'm on the edge, so that the colonists won't see me. I'm just going to stay on a U-shape behind the spawn, and work my way back towards the place I started now, because I don't want to go towards the front of the map, and just finish off these D-Roy's and their legs. And I can kill some too if I want to. But then, um, once this happens, then I'm going to kill one of the colonists and work on the uh, blue tadpoles. If you happen to have a bunch of colonists chase you during this phase, because it is very easy to alert them, that's st it's still possible um, to, to continue this phase. Just focus on the D-Roy's legs and just keep dashing around. You can dash in a circle now instead of U-shape because it doesn't matter about alerting the colonists because they all see you. And just keep focusing on the D-Roy's legs until they're all down. And then you can and then you can uh, work on killing the colonists. It's the same idea, it's just you can make a circle instead of a U-shape to avoid the colonists. All right, so now once you kill enough, or once you kill one colonist, sorry, um, you'll hear them scream, the, the colonists scream, and they'll call in their 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 blue tadpoles. This is this is probably the toughest phase, honestly, because it's so hard to deal with, especially if you don't have the D-Roy's legs and all that taken care of ahead of time. So that's why it's important not to kill the colonists until you're ready. So now what I'm gonna do is fencer or wing diver. I'm well, as fencer, I'm just going to constantly try and missile them, um, missile them down out of the air. And if you're if you're careful and you try and wait till they get close to you, not close to you, but to where you can your missiles can reach them, and you can actually missile all of them, then you can constantly keep them knocked to the ground and they have no chance to really hit you. It's when the, it's when you have like one or two of them um, that don't get hit by missiles and they start dive bombing you is when you have a tough time using missiles again because it's so hard to recover. Whereas if wing diver with the ghost chaser, it's a lot easier for her to just turn around and just tap the trigger of the ghost chaser to knock them down out of the air. But fencer. You have to make sure you missile all of them each time, or you're going to have a lot of tough tough time keeping them on the ground. So that's what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to stay away from the pack of the enemies, which, you know, as Fencer is pretty easy, as Wing Dyer is pretty easy, and just constantly knock down these tadpoles. And if I see a chance to where they land on the ground next to me, then I will um, then I will kill them But uh, with the shotgun. Otherwise, I'll just constantly keep missiling them down just to be safe. It makes it a lot easier. And like I said, with Wing Diver, just, you know, tap the Ghost Chaser, um, or you can use the Mirage 5-way and just tap that, knock them out of the air, and then if you have a chance, you know, use your Dragoon Lance to kill them or the Rapier to kill them. But always keep an eye on if one of them's coming after you because they can they can easily take off, I don't know, online it feels like 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 damage with one pass. It's, it's very, very dangerous, which I'll show here at the end here because I, I decide to, instead of missling them, I show you what happens if it starts to get bad for Fencer and how to deal with the Tadpoles. Um, for Air Raider, like I said, if you have Barga with a defense post, hopefully you can stay alive long enough and kill a few of them. Um, if you are if you have a Nyx, then it's pr pretty tough. You know, you have to kind of kill, try and kill them with the Nyx, um, you know, when they land. But uh, you can just keep jumping around and just trying to kill other stuff if you have another teammate working on the, the tadpoles. Like maybe just jump out, call in a quick sprite fall on the tad on the um, colonists or the D-Roids and then jump back in and keep running, jumping around. But... Uh, it's tough for Air Raider for sure, and Ranger of course. I, I don't see how Ranger could survive this last phase honestly. Um, you'd have to constantly be missling everything down, and you'd have to be fast enough. And I think that would be tough. I think the colonists would catch up with you. So, it's definitely tough with Ranger for sure. He's more of a support role, like I said. 
Now I want to show you here um, the beauty of the finest hammer. Like I said, I'm playing online by myself on Inferno, and I'm able to stay alive with relatively low health. Um, like I said, as long as you keep an eye on when the, the frogs come in, which what you'll notice is as they start dive bombing in, once they get to about like 100 meters away from you, they start shooting acid at you. So as wing diver, what you can do is you can dash left or right to dodge that acid. As fencer, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and swing my finest hammer so that I'm always having that damage reduction as they land, and then once they land, I can jump close and just shoot them with the shotgun a little bit. But without this finest hammer, I mean, you can also use a Vulcan hammer, but I like finest better just for the fact that it's good on the early tadpole phase. But um, you can, whenever you're in trouble, even, like, I, I cut out parts of this video so I wouldn't make it too long, but even as I was, as, as I had to dash by some D-Roys um, with their legs up, um, as they were shooting lasers at me, what I was doing is I was dash hopping and shooting and hitting the finest hammer in the air the whole time. Like as soon as the finest hammer was up, not even charging to red, I would just constantly swing that hammer as I was dashing away from the uh, D-Roys, and I was able to survive their 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 laser shots, which you know without the hammer would have been impossible. So, as you can see, I have I don't know what is it six six uh, tadpoles on me right now and uh, I'm able to survive with this finest hammer and the shotgun is very very strong so it's kinda nice replacement for the uh, for the uh, dispersion mortar because you know the shotgun has more shots of course and you're able to do more damage whereas dispersion mortar you only had two shots so it's definitely an uh, improvement but uh, as you can see this is how you can deal with the tadpoles with the finest hammer and that's why I recommend it so so yeah that's pretty much it um, like I said wing diver can knock down the tadpoles with your ghost chaser and air raider and wing di and and ranger are going to struggle so so it, it's it's kind of nice to have a fencer or a wing diver as one of your classes for this mission because the ending part is is very very difficult without them and uh you might be able to do it with a barga but with the defense post but it's still going to be very struggle so so yeah i hope this was helpful a little bit to you this is pretty much the best uh, ways i know how to deal with this mission um if you know of any better strategies uh, get, let me know um like I said, if you're playing offline, it's a lot different um, as far as what you can get away with. But if you're playing online, it, it becomes this mission becomes very, very difficult. So um, I'm trying to make it a strategy for the online portion because most I think most people are going to be playing with the group online. So, so yeah, like I said, let me know of anything in the comments you suggest as well. And um, I hope this was helpful. And once again, thanks a lot for watching. And remember, if is leave a man behind ever. And if you're interested in ways to support the channel, please consider uh, sharing the video with someone or or the channel with someone or watching a few ads as it does help financially and it's very much appreciated. Thanks a lot.